Hey there, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru, and I've got another product review for here on the channel today, but this one's gonna be a little bit different. I'm gonna be reviewing three different products, all of which have already been reviewed on the channel. And you may be wondering, why am I gonna be reviewing them again? Why don't I do something new? Well, the reason is you guys. When I reviewed these three products in front of me, I got a lot of feedback from folks saying, hey, you should have tested it this way. You should try this configuration, or hey, why don't you like add this fan to this product? It'll be so much better. So I decided that since I had the occasion to retest one of these products, this PATX V2, I'd go ahead and use two of the coolers that were a really good fit for the case. And that is the Alpenfold Black Ridge and the IS60 from ID Cooling, which I actually named the best cooler under 60 millimeters when I tested it in a shootout. And what I'm gonna be doing is modifying these two coolers with different fans, which is basically one of the things people ask me to do. And in the case of the case, I'm gonna be doing something very different. While I tested this as an ITX case using my ITX test rig, a lot of people said, hey, it's called a PATX for a reason. It's an ATX case. So indeed, I knew that when I tested it, but hey, I had an ITX test bench set up for cases like this, and at least this size class. And that's how I tested it. I tested against other cases that were similarly sized. But I do have my ATX test rig set up in here. It's actually a 9900K system. It's the one I personally use. And I decided I wanted to actually move it to this case for my own personal use. I wanted to move it away from a huge tower into this desktop system that I could actually put literally on my desktop. And I said, you know what? I'll take this opportunity to give it the best cooler I can do. And I thought the IS60 would be it. But then I realized, hey, maybe I can mod the Black Ridge from Alpenphone to make it even better than the IS60. So that's what this review is all about. When I get to my conclusions, I'm gonna have some questions for you in terms of what we need to see from the industry. And then I'm gonna send the link to this video to all the manufacturers mentioned in the video so that your comments can be read by them. Because I think this is a really cool area of computing, small form factor, particularly cases like this that can fit ATX systems that are really, really slim. Coolers like this that fit very unique cases like the one we have here. I want to encourage this in the industry, but we need your help because I think that in a lot of situations, the manufacturers say there aren't enough users out there. We don't want to create more products like these or more products like these. We're just going to do the same old thing we've done all along. So please stick with this review. I think you're going to find it really, really interesting, both in terms of what this case can do with an ATX uh, motherboard in it and then what these coolers can do with some upgraded fans. So stay tuned. I'm gonna give you a closer look at the products and then we'll get into the benchmarks. For about the past two years, my own production rig has been based in this Cooler Master chassis using an RTX 2080 Ti, a 9900K from Intel, and a huge 360 millimeter cooler from Thermaltake. Switching to a slimline case meant dumping that Thermaltake as well as the massive AX1600i power supply. Instead, I went with the SX750 from Silverstone. And here's a quick look at the interior of the PATX V2. It's actually been discontinued, but the newer V3, which is not yet shipping, has the exact same interior layout. It's just made out of aluminum. And the PCI riser cable is not included. You have to buy that separately. Now, in terms of the coolers, I do have the IS60 on hand. This is gonna be an automatic pick for me because it did so well in my roundup, but I did not like the fan. It rattled a little bit. So I decided I would upgrade it with a Noctua fan, specifically the NFA12X15, which is the best 15 millimeter fan on the market, especially for coolers. And to challenge this duo, I pulled out the Alpenphone Blackridge, but knew it would need a little bit of an assist because it stands at just 47 millimeters tall with a 92 millimeter fan mounted below. And it is not even a retail grade fan, not particularly effective. So I took it off and replaced it with a Scythe Cosiflex 92 and flip the orientation out of the box. You can see the fan is set up to blow up through the heatsink. I instead flipped that scythe and put it in pulling down through the heatsink and then mounted another fan on top, specifically a Reven model that's just 12 millimeters thick. That allowed me to stay within the confines of my PATX case that had a hard limit at 59 millimeters tall. So 12 millimeters, plus 47 millimeters is 59 millimeters. And yes, I had to go with black duct tape to mount it because the included clips from Alpenphone were for 15 millimeter thick fans. They did not work and they would have actually stood above that 59 millimeter limit anyway. 
Here's the full system installed with the IS-60 equipped with a Noctua fan. I think this looks really good. That blacked out fan blends in well with everything else. Of course, the Reven fan also stands out in a unique way here on the Alpenphone Black Ridge, which also has a scythe fan underneath. But the point of this build isn't looks, it's performance. So let's get into those benchmarks, starting with idle at the desktop. My 9900K does run hot with the id cooling is60 struggling at 49 degrees that is pretty hot for no activity on the pc note that the alpenphone blackridge with the dual fans is actually doing relatively well same noise levels but quite a bit lower temp than the is60 with its enhanced noctua fan and really in the same ballpark as my liquid cooler which is actually quite a bit louder at idle so a really good trade-off here i like how the blackridge is performing let's get into some load benchmarks all right, well, the id cooling IS-60 has met its match. It failed in this test, hitting 100 degrees and then causing the CPU to throttle. It just simply could not handle the heat, even with the upgraded Noctua fan. The Alpenphone Blackridge, on the other hand, with its upgraded fans, was more than a match, coming in at 86 degrees, but a very loud 52 decibels. I'm including the RPM of the two fans here. They are well above 2,000. And that means it was quite a droner and I did not like it. So I did noise normalize it here to see how it would do versus the id cooling at the same noise level, 42 decibels. It's still just 88 degrees. So well within the realm of reason for 9900K, but none of these setups could even come close to the 360 millimeter all-in-one, which is just 30 decibels and 71 degrees. That, folks, is the trade-off going with a slim system. If you can't fit an all-in-one and you can't fit a tower cooler, you're going to have louder noise levels at load and your CPU is going to run hot, potentially throttling. Luckily, gaming usually isn't a huge CPU load, so if that's your gig, you are in luck. Any of these coolers is going to be able to handle a hot CPU. The id cooling IS-60 is borderline at 88 degrees, but the Alpenphone Blackridge has no problem with the 9900K at 73 degrees. And the Cooler Master H500P with a liquid cooler, of course, is just at 60. Note that the PATX V2 is such a good case for video cards that it's actually cooler, 74 degrees, the GPU temp, than it is in the massive tower, the H500P with dual 200 millimeter intake fans and 140 millimeter exhaust fan. The sublimely designed PATX V2 beats it without a fan in sight. All right, well, consider me really impressed by the PATX V2 for actually accommodating an ATX motherboard without a lot of hassle, and the Blackridge for coming through once modified with high-performance fans. This thing was a beast of a cooler, 59 millimeters, definitely getting past the IS-60, even with an upgraded fan from Noctua. So I can officially name the Black Ridge, or maybe it's unofficial, the best cooler under 60 millimeters when you're using a 12 millimeter thick fan. And that's really the conundrum here. I use a fan from Reven that you can no longer source. And frankly, there's nothing else on the market as far as I can tell, they've all been discontinued. And the thinnest fan you can get is 15 millimeters and that just wouldn't fit in this case. That makes this about 62 or 63 millimeters tall, different product class, all right? A lot of cases are built around 58 millimeter coolers. And that is because that used to be a standard. There was a Gemin model from Cooler Master. There was the Scythe Big Shuriken 2, which was replaced with the Big Shuriken 3, which is 69 millimeters, totally different cooler. We have the IS-60, which has been discontinued and replaced by the IS-60 Evo, which is 64 millimeters tall, totally different cooler. Bunch of other manufacturers, Reven itself with this yellow fan had a 58 millimeter tall cooler, it's gone. So what's going on here? You know, is this just a cursed standard, the 58 millimeter standard and cases that are built around it, should they just disappear from the market? But ultimately what we need to do is hear from you guys. I wanna hear what you think manufacturers should do. Should we get more coolers at the 58 millimeter height like the IS-60? Should we just standardize on 47 millimeters like the Blackridge? Should we do something in between? Maybe the Wraith Stealth standard from AMD, which is about 55 millimeters tall, should that be the new standard for low profile coolers? Or should we give up and say, look, CPUs are getting so hot, none of these coolers are gonna be good enough. Let's go to 65 or 70 millimeters as the minimum cooler height for a high performance system and just relegate all those, you know, under 47 millimeter coolers to, you know, APUs or other low wattage systems, not enthusiast class systems. And this is gonna be really important because it will drive case design, right? So just like this was designed around 
basically 58 millimeter coolers that are no longer available, we might see other cases designed around a new standard if you guys speak up. And I am going to be sending this to a bunch of manufacturers. I'm going to be hitting up Alpenphone, uh, Id Cooling, Scythe and Reven, Silverstone, Noctua, and Cooler Master. And I'm going to ask them, hey, what do you think about this? You know, you've all been in this market, the 58 millimeter high market, or you have the potential to enter that market. Would you do it? Or do you think case manufacturers should do something else? Would you agree to a different standard? Would you all come out with 55 millimeter tall coolers? Or do you all want to, you know, standardize it 65 millimeters? I want to hear from you guys. What is the best standard for a new low profile, high performance cooler? So again, please post that down below. This is really important to manufacturers. If you enjoyed this video, definitely give me a like and subscribe. And as always, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru, and I will catch you next time.